Hi, this is Lynn from Gardening from Square One. Welcome to my garden. Hi everybody. So today I'm gonna to give you a tour of my front yard garden. And so this is where I began. We started with a blank slate. Absolutely no infrastructure whatsoever um, was on this property. And so the first year was a lot of trial and error. We had a gardening package that was provided via the builder. A lot of the plants didn't survive the first winter because they were for zone 9, not for zone 8B. And I wasn't really satisfied with the look of what they put in. So with the exception of a few boxwoods, I pulled everything out of this front garden. The backyard was basically a blank slate. We didn't do anything to the backyard. Um, we mainly just kind of focused on the front yard initially. So what you're seeing right now is the landscape that the the builders, gardeners that we just we just went with the package that they offered because after building the home, we really didn't have the bandwidth to try and come up with a um, garden design. And so as you can see, there is nothing to keep the Bermuda grass. It was dormant at the time. There's nothing to keep it out of the planting bed. So one of the first things that we did in 2023 after surrendering to the Bermuda, Bermuda grass was putting in this um, raised planter bed of the autumn blend limestone to keep the Bermuda out of the planter bed. Practically every plant that was in the bed had to be removed. I'll go over the different plants in this bed um, in a few minutes. But to start with, on the east side of the property, um, one of my concerns was privacy. And so you can see directly into our front yard through the wrought iron fencing. So I, I started um, adding plants to this new bed that was created May of last year. Um, outside of this planter bed are two, well, two non-mature live oaks. So what you're looking at right now are two d rock boxwood. They'll become about two to three feet wide and about nine feet tall. They were, they're little, they're little one gallon plants. They're not supposed to grow really quickly. I hope they grow a little quicker than what I've heard, but we shall see. This half moon shape that extends out into, uh, well, extends out away from the fence line. I'm not certain what I want to put there yet. I have um, sprinter boxwoods that line this fence. So they go all the way down to the gate. And so I was actually thinking about continuing this row of sprinter boxwoods that you see around the front of this half moon shape. So we'll see. I'm not certain what I want to do here yet. I've thought about adding a, top, a couple of the summertime blues vitex in this area. But right now, um, it's not that much of a concern because I don't know what I want to do. And so... This is probably the fourth or fifth garden that I'm installing from square one, essentially. And one thing that I've learned is to be patient and take my time. You know, I don't want to go through the trouble of buying plants and planting them and then letting them grow only to discover, oh, no, I don't want this here. Um, my husband used to say that my plants have passports. Um, because they would move throughout the yard and, um, you know, to other people's gardens, for example. And so now I'm just trying to exercise more patience and take my time with, with the garden. But privacy was a concern. And so the sprinter boxwoods that you see are really just softening the runner and fencing. 
On the opposite side, I have a combination of dwarf Burford hollies that become about eight to 10 feet wide, about eight feet tall or so. And I also have some blue point junipers that become about six to eight feet in width and about 10 to 12 feet in height. And so those plants on the other side of the fence are the ones that are gonna do the heavy lifting, so to speak, in terms of creating the privacy that we desire for the backyard. So here's a look back a little from where I just walked from, so the east side of the front yard. And so now I am going to focus more towards the actual front of the house. Before I get there though, I'm gonna show you the two derunt box woods that I have flanking the gate. The one on the left did not survive at all. I think that maybe it was getting too much sun. And so I'm going to replace this with a kindly privet. The kindly privet will become about four feet or so wide and about six feet in height, but it creates a nice or should create a nice shrub that will provide privacy um, on the ends of the this um, planter bed. On the opposite side of the gate, there's a de rock boxwood that actually survived. And I'm going to probably just dig this one out and move it. I have another um, privet, kindly privet, that I will put in its place. And again, it'll become about four feet wide by six feet high. You'll always be able to look into my backyard through the gate here. I can't really do anything about that, but um, I can provide some privacy along the, the run iron fence line. And so that was, that was kind of a priority for 2023. Um, Practically everything that I'm going over in this front garden was installed sometime between May of last year through about November of last year. The front part, front, the front porch bed, because it it um, it flanks our front porch, and again the, these D runk boxwood become about two to three feet in width and about nine feet in height. And as you can see, the stone wall just goes up and up and up and up. These derunk boxwood are about 30 inches in height so far. So there's plenty of room for them to grow and kind of soften the stone on the, um, on the house. Now these are Japanese boxwood. These were actually, the larger one was planted by um, the builder's landscaper. The one on the right was um, replaced because it it just didn't survive. And um, in front of these are Veronica Lavender Lightsaber. I've been extremely impressed with the Veronica. They were actually semi-evergreen for me throughout this winter. And so because I've been so happy with the performance of these, and what you're seeing right now, these went in as little quartz. Um, when did I plant them? I think I planted them last June. So they've been in my garden now for a few months. I'm actually going to plant seven more. So I'm going to carry the Veronica around this, um, around the curve in front of the d -runk. They become about 28 inches to 30 inches in height, but they remain about 18 to 20 inches in width. So they're pretty, um, pretty narrow. This is my Summertime Blues Vitex. I have been extremely impressed with this particular chase tree or Vitex. This one was planted um, late last fall. And so in front of it, Blooming in purple is the cat's meow nepeta or nepeta. These started blooming the beginning of March. So I'm actually shooting this video on March 24th. 
I shot a video, or at least I thought I did, about three weeks prior. I don't think I pressed the record button because um, nothing was there. So again, there are more Japanese privets. They were planted also like the ones around the corner by the builder's landscaper. The two on the sides died. Um, one was choked out by the Bermuda, so the one on the left, and then the one on the right, um, when we dug it out and started getting ready to dig to replace it, we noticed that there was a huge boulder underneath it. So clearly it couldn't have been, it couldn't have had proper water drainage with the boulder of that size underneath the plant. So um, that's why the two on the sides, the two flanking the ones on the side are actually smaller because they are replacement plants for two that died. The grassy looking plants are sedge. Those are feather falls carex. They become about two feet in height and two feet in width. And um, here in central Texas, they can take morning sun, but that's about it. Nothing beyond the morning sun. So here's a little look at the planter bread, the planter bed again. I tell you, I this is what it looked like previously, just to give you some idea. So yeah, I surrendered to the Bermuda. It just, oh my gosh, it was a nightmare. I would pull weeds and then within a week or so, they'd be back. Um, the Bermuda was coming from all kinds of places. And so it, it, it just, um, it, it, it was a losing battle without something in place to really keep it out of this planter bed. I tell you, I'm so tempted to fill up all of this negative space with annuals or, or something else. And I'm trying to be patient and keeping in mind how large things become. So shifting gears over to the right side of the porch, so the right side of the walkway, that leads to the porch. I have three derunk boxwood. Um, notice they are different sizes. The two on the left are replacements for two that die. The one on the right is the only one that survived of the original three. And because it survived, I decided to go ahead and replace them because I figured maybe it was something in my cultivation practices. Maybe I did not plant the other two high enough and maybe that's why they died. So I'm trying again. And so if these derunk boxwoods don't make it this time, odds are I will probably just put more Japanese privet in, um, in their place. So fingers crossed because I really would like to have height in this area, the, the nine feet in height, eight to nine feet in height that these derunk boxwood become. But like I said, and I like the darker green, green color because in the fall or the late winter, when not a lot is blooming, the different shades of green, I think, actually provide interest. So to the right of the derunk box, I have a Beyond Midnight Caryopteris. That is an excellent plant for Central Texas. I have three in this planter bed, and in front of those... I have more of the Puckster Amethyst Budlia. And so these were recently planted. They were little quart plants. Oh, I have a couple of weeds that I need to pull. In front of the Budlia and flanking this the sidewalk, so the curb around the sidewalk are D runk. Or not, I'm my apologies. Flanking the porch. Um, so around the curve and down the walk are baby gem boxwood. So here's a look back at the front of the house and the new plants that I have put in between now and then. Most of these plants went in between now and like last May. So I have unplugged So Blue Salvia in the sidewalk area, so along the sidewalk and this portion of the planter bed. And as you can see, they are starting to show a little purple um, for the beautiful purple blooms. 
that they will have pretty much all year. These are th uh, three more of the Pugster Budlia, and they are also the Amethyst um, version. The little one you see on the left is a replacement for one that did not survive. I put in three, so the two larger ones that you see Last year, last summer, they were the exact same size as the one on the left. But like I said, the one on the left actually died. And so what you're seeing is a little replacement. Budley are also excellent plants for us here in Central Texas. These are three dwarf Burford hollies. And creating more evergreen interests. I like that they have berries. The dwarf Burford hollies and I have Yapon hollies. Some of the birds that come through during the winter, they like to eat these berries. And I really enjoy feeding the, bo the birds, having something for them to eat when food sources could be a little scarcer for them in my area. I don't know how large I'm going to let these dwarf Burford hollies become, though. I have that's that window. They say, oh, you don't want things to be taller than the window, but that's a garage window. Um... And so I don't want anyone looking in the garage, and, and we don't really look out much. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, our the, the home that we rented had mature dwarf Burford hollies, and they were kept at about five, five and a half feet in height, about four feet in width. So I was thinking about letting these three reach somewhere around that same size. Time will tell. I really don't know, but... You know, I'm trying to be a little more laid back and less type A. I'm more patient with my gardening now. These are more Feather Falls Carex that I am definitely going to move. I just, I don't know. I don't think they're doing anything for this bed. And I think what I'm going to do is continue the Baby Gem box all the way across. You see the little ones on the right and then that on the left. And I think I'm just going to fill in the space with more of the baby gem box. This is a Henry Dolberg salvia. It'll have beautiful purple blooms until the first frost. It has not started blooming yet, but I expect to see blooms on it in the next couple of weeks. This is a Hopi crepe myrtle. And again, like I said, these are derunk box. And then I have a, a Japanese box planted in the corner. I also have um, a lo and behold, uh, I think it's blue, lo and blue chip, blue chip Budlia. I actually planted two. There was one on the opposite side. It got trampled by someone or something, so I had to dig it out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've gone back and forth between putting... Um, cat's meow, more cat's meow pajamas in the space, or I've thought about um, putting in denim and lace Russian sage. I don't know what I'm going to put in this space in, in front of and surrounding that Hopi crepe myrtle. It's going to have pink blooms, and so the thingy is kind of purple, pink, blue, and so I don't know. I'll figure it out. These are Chef's Choice Culinary Rosemary, and they've been excellent here. I planted these last fall. I actually need to move the one in the middle and the one on the light on the right over about um, eight to twelve inches. I think they're going to be a little too close together, and I think that spacing would look a little better. I think it's a little too crap right now. So moving past the garage. Towards the front side of the house, I have three more d rank boxwood. These were, I can't remember, one or two gallon plants. I put them in the ground last fall also. The one on the left is pretty much almost in full shade. It only gets afternoon sun for about two hours, and then the other two get afternoon sun for about four hours. I'm thinking about what I'm going to put in front of them, though. I think... I just want to keep this bed evergreen. Um, so evergreen interest and nothing really flowering other than the summertime blues, chase tree or vitex that I'll show you 
in a minute when I move around the curve. So next to these three derunk boxwood, so to actually the right of them, that is a little kindly privet. It was planted late last fall also. I have three of them. Again, they become about four feet in height, six feet in width. Um, these kindly privets are supposed to be non-invasive. One thing that I'm really happy about is that they've put out a lot of new growth. They seem to be very happy. The deer have not eaten them. The rabbits are staying away from them. A nice weed over there that I need to pull. And so they're kind of the proper size for this space. They're going to become large enough to obscure that electrical box, but then not so large that there won't be a path for servicing if required. This is the Summertime Blues Vitax that I was mentioning a minute ago. It's stellar here. Um, this plant went in last, I think it was early last May. It was a three-gallon plant. That panel's eight feet wide and five feet in height. So this gives you some idea of the growth that this has put out um, in less than a year. It is pest resistant, drought resistant. It's been a stellar plant. So back towards the front of the house, this is my progress thus far. Oh, please disregard my grass. Last year was brutal for the Bermuda grass and um, yeah, I have some work to do as far as that goes. So um, if you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see updates, I, I will be posting a video um, that will show more of these plants as they start to bloom throughout the season. Please consider clicking subscribe, um, click the notifications bell. I will be adding a backyard tour pretty soon. My backyard actually has a lot more plant variety than the front yard, but I just like to say thank you for watching and I hope you are able to get out into your garden today and that's about it. Bye.